Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ramon. And in today's video, we're gonna be doing another installment of my Simplified series. But this time I'm gonna be tackling a topic that I feel very strongly about. This is the soap box that I choose to stand on. It's one of the few. And that's gonna be about alcohol and skincare and my opinions on it because it's a very divisive subject, a very divisive topic here on YouTube land. You got a lot of skincare YouTubers with very specific opinions, much like myself. So that sounds good to you, keep watching. Before we get into it, make sure you hit that subscribe, hit that bell notification so that you know when I post more of these videos, as well as many of the other series that I have on my channel. And hit that thumbs up so I know that you guys like these videos. Um, simplified series on my channel is something that I'm choosing to focus on in regards to really teach about specific topics, products, and concepts in skincare. Therefore, hitting that thumbs up lets me know that you like this kind of content and that I should be doing more of it. And also, before we get into it, I just wanna specify I'm not a doctor. I'm not an esthetician. I am, however, a biochemistry student and about to start a cosmetic sciences degree program this fall. Therefore, everything I say comes from more of a formulation, chemistry, skincare aficionado perspective. Do with that what you will. So, alcohols. They're in a lot of products. What really sparked this video, why I wanted to do it, was I was watching a video by Skincare by Hiram. I think he was reviewing someone's skincare routine and they happened to pop up a Biore sunscreen that I personally love myself. This one. Well, mainly I like the watery essence a lot more, but same thing, right? Um, and how he wasn't a fan of the sunscreen because alcohol was so high up in the ingredients list. And I was like, but it's denatured alcohol. And as someone who likes skincare and understood formulation a little bit more, that sounds so shady. I was like, well, mm, I'm gonna, I have opinions on that. Mainly because there is a purpose and reason for alcohol and skincare in some and certain respects. Is there a reason to be concerned with it? Yes, so let's break it down, let's start. A lot of the research I went into with this video was stuff I'd kind of read online, stuff I'd studied in terms of like formulation and the chemistry behind skincare products. But um, if you guys want more references to some more information with this video, I took a lot of information and I view these people as very great sources and resources for skincare related content. Uh, first and foremost, Michelle Wong from Lab Nothing Beauty Science. Chemistry PhD has really great information breaking down skincare in terms of a chemistry perspective. Specific points I'm gonna pull for this video from a video she did in collaboration with skincare chemistry cosmetic formulator Stephen Ko. I also pulled some information from Dr. Dre, famous dermatologist on YouTube, and her perspective on featuring alcohol, especially denatured alcohol in skincare. The first website I went to when I um, actually had a question about this was from a website called My Dad the Chemist. I'll link a lot of resource videos and info down in the description box, but just so you guys know where I'm coming from and the resources that you too can check out if you have further questions or want more information. So let's start talking about the alcohol that people kind of demonize in skincare. And we're gonna use the turn and learn method from Cassandra Bakeson that I mentioned a lot. Um, I think it's a great reference to be able to start teaching consumers about ingredients. Therefore, they're more informed consumers when they shop. When you turn a product around, you might see specific ingredients like ethyl alcohol or a denatured alcohol. And essentially what ethyl alcohol is, it's, it's ethanol, which is like the alcohol that we drink. Ethanol or ethyl alcohol gets denatured and becomes denatured alcohol. That's simple. And so in essence, like while they're the same thing, for example, the FDA allows you to say something's alcohol free so long as it doesn't have ethyl alcohol, but it could have the denatured alcohol, which is the same compound, just denatured, and it's okay by the FDA standard. So now you might be thinking like, why does it need alcohol in the first place? Mind you, this kind of alcohol is different than isopropyl alcohol and different than the alcohol that we use as rubbing alcohol. Ethanol or denatured alcohol serves a very specific purpose in skincare. A few of the reasons that it can be included in skincare is A, to serve as a solvent. It helps certain ingredients dissolve and better mix into the base compound they're trying to mix into. It allows products to be able to absorb and permeate the skin barrier a lot more effectively and efficiency. And it allows certain formulations to be a lot more cosmetically elegant by making them a lot more lightweight and less greasy. For example, let's talk about alcohol and let's say uh, sunscreens, like the video that kind of inspired the whole thing. The denatured alcohol in sunscreen allows the UV filters to be a lot more emollient and mixing into the compound, the cream or the lotion format that they're trying to be mixed into, so that they're a lot better um, mixed and therefore a lot better absorbed. On top of that, it allows the UV filter to be able to absorb into the skin a little bit better, so that it ensures that it's being able to form the proper film, the proper protective layer it needs to. And on top of that, if your skincare has other antioxidant and skin benefiting nourishing ingredients, those are able to permeate a lot deeper as a result. On top of that, and one of the reasons I love Asian sunscreens is that it allows them to have a lot more of a very lightweight, non-greasy, quick drying, quick setting texture. Granted, the alcohol might be a little bit higher in the ingredient list. It evaporates so quickly, it's more volatile. 
and therefore it leaves the uh, formulation as soon as it's applied topically and it allows the product to set a lot better. You can also find alcohol in cleansers, for example, like OG makeup removers and whatnot. And essentially in that format, the alcohol can be used to remove oils, lipids, and waxes from the skin. So it's really good at removing dirt and sebum and oil if it's in that cleansing format as well. So yeah, basically low molecular weight alcohols act as solvents for ingredients that wouldn't normally dissolve easily in their format. For example, salicylic acid doesn't dissolve normally in water, but it does dissolve very, very easily in the ethanol denatured alcohol base. So you might find salicylic acid treatments that are in a vehicle of denatured alcohol as a result of that. But now, we discussed bad alcohols and denatured alcohol, ethyl alcohol are the ones that are more demonized in skincare, but you also have fatty alcohols and those are a little bit more, I don't want to say celebrated, but they're a little bit more accepted in skincare. I'll put some names on the screen because there's a couple of them that I don't know the names of right now. But essentially these fatty alcohols are a lot more emollient, they're a lot more softening to the skin. They are much uh, bigger molecular weights as well. Basically, yeah, they're featured in products for that emollient softening property. They smooth the skin surface and they act as a bit more of a nourishing, moisturizing base. They're a little bit more waxy. For some reason in my head, I think of like a coconut oil cleansing balm texture. And normally fatty alcohols are derived from plant bases, plant and fruit bases. So overall, the lower molecular weight denatured alcohols, better for oily skin. Again, think of like the sunscreens that sit on the skin, set down really quick in a very lightweight texture. Well, fatty alcohols are better for dry skin because they have that more emollient, nourishing, thicker consistency to them that stay on the skin a lot more. So basically, yeah, that's the purpose of alcohol and skincare. So now getting to what the concerns are of the alcohol and skincare. Again, I mentioned that people fear alcohol can be drying to the skin, which is understandable. Something else to consider though is it allows for further penetration of certain ingredients into the skin as well, which can be great if you want certain nourishing, rejuvenating, healing, beneficial ingredients to get into the skin to permeate a lot deeper. But sometimes there's bad ingredients you don't want to get in as much either. For example, um, plant and fruit-based um, extracts that can be irritating to the skin, essential oils, fragrance. And on top of that, some of the fatty acids might also be a little bit more irritating for those with sensitive skin types, such as those who suffer from eczema or those who have uh, severe acne. So I'd say while it's okay to have alcohol in your skincare for the specific purpose of bettering or enhancing the formulation, be mindful of how often and how frequently it is in your routine, as well as where it is on the ingredients list. Just because too much of higher concentration of alcohol can potentially be irritating. That being said, be mindful of what else is in the product as well and what purpose that alcohol is serving in the formulation. If it's in there for the sake of being alcohol, it's not gonna do you any good. But if it's in a vehicle that it's acting as a solvent and featuring other nourishing ingredients, it's not as bad to feature in your skincare routine as often. So what do you do when you're shopping for skincare? Essentially, turn and learn, see what's on the back of the product, see where alcohol falls in the range of skincare ingredients. On top of that, look for what other ingredients are in the product as well. For example, you could have humectants, silicones, emollients, and moisturizers in the product that really work to nourish and uh, moisturize the skin, therefore completely counteracting any potential drying effect you might have from the really volatile ethanol or denatured alcohol. And as well, see what other actives, antioxidants, skin benefiting ingredients are in the product as well, because those are the ones that are gonna be penetrating your skin at a much higher concentration and a lot more effectively due to the alcohol. So point blank, alcohol, it's not necessarily the worst ingredient you can have in a product, mainly because it does serve a very important purpose in formulation. It acts as a solvent, it allows the formulation texture to be a lot more elegant, more quick drying, a lot more conducive for oily skin especially. And on top of that, it allows other products to help permeate the fatty lipid layer of your skin a lot more effectively to get deeper and give you a lot more of that punch of skincare benefits you're looking for. Really focus on where the alcohol is in the ingredient list. Consider the other benefits and the risks of that alcohol. But in reality, alcohol is not bad. It benefits the skincare products, the skincare formulation a lot. The only thing I'd really have to consider then is your skin type. Do you have hypersensitive skin? Then really consider what type of alcohol and where it is in the ingredient list because you might not want that alcohol. But for honestly, most skin types, it serves to benefit you a lot better. So with that, just be a little bit more of an informed consumer. Don't fear alcohol. It's not a bad ingredient. Just consider how it's being used in the product. And that was Alcohol and Skincare Simplified. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, this was actually a really, really fun video to research. It's something that I'd really been contemplating, really been wondering about, and therefore I'm really happy I looked it up, did the research, and I'm sharing that with you. If you want more of these simplified videos, feel free to let me know in the comments what subject you want me to break down for you. If you like this kind of content, feel free to hit that thumbs up just because I like making these. I want to know you like watching them. And again, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification, and share with your friends. Because I like friends. And I like you. Maybe. Okay. Bye, guys.